Hi, welcome. Thank you. Thank you, John. Today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about specific transitions, why these transitions may be difficult, strategies that you can use to support these transitions, and some proactive strategies. So the first transition that I'll talk to you about today is the transition that children are going to experience coming from their home to kindergarten. This is the first transition. Some things that you as a kindergarten teacher or an educator can think about are what are the child's strengths? What are their challenges? What are their interests? What are the things that make them upset? How do you know if a meltdown is coming? What does the meltdown look like? And what is calming for the child at that stage? How do you calm the child already in a meltdown or after a meltdown? What's the child's sensory preferences? What do they seek out? What do they avoid? Does the child have any friends who are coming or who are at the kindergarten? Now, what can we do differently for this transition from home to kindergarten? It's a different year. So things are looking a little bit different for these children who are going to be starting kindergarten next year. So how could we do this a little bit differently to the way that we normally do? So we could make a video tour of the kindergarten. I think a lot of the educators this year have gotten really comfortable and familiar with using things such as their iPhone videos. Make a video tour of the kindergarten and show the families and the children the different areas. Take photos and send the photos of the different areas. Create introduction videos of the teachers or little introduction videos about the different things that they'll be doing throughout the day and what they might look like. You could also set up one-to-one -one FaceTime calls with the children and their parents just so they can get to know you a little bit, ask you any questions that they have and also for you to get to meet the children. You could run a small online group session with the children. You could read them a book or you could do a small little activity together, sing some songs. Think about what these children need to know. What do they need to know? Or what would be really helpful for them to know before they come to the kindergarten? And how are you going to tell that to them without them necessarily visiting the kindergarten face to face? So when the children are at kindergarten, there's a number of transitions that you will support them with throughout the day. And these can be difficult for some children. The reasons why these transitions can be difficult is that some children may have difficulty shifting their attention from one task to another. They may have difficulty shifting their attention from one child to another. So when changing from working or playing with one child to another child. Also when one adult moves away and another adult moves into the interaction with them could be difficult or even the interaction and sorry, the transition from moving from one activity to the next. The reasons why children might have difficulty with this transition is that they just don't know what or understand what is coming next. Some children have difficulty with changes in routines, and this is particularly for children who prefer predictability, those with additional needs, a diagnosis of a disability or an autism spectrum disorder. The child simply may not have heard what you've asked them to do, or they might not have understood the verbal direction to transition. They might have been distracted or there might have been sensory stimuli that was preventing them from listening. There might be simply too many steps in the instruction or there might be too many words in your sentence. Some children may not recognise the social cues. For example, other children around them are packing away their lunch. That's a social cue that I might need to pack away my lunch to and some children just don't pick up on those. And often it's that the current activity is more motivating than the next activity or the activity that they're moving to. Therefore, they don't want to transition. So if we can look at these transitions and our planning and our understanding of them as a benefit, because this is a challenge for us and it's a challenge for the child. When a child meets a challenge, the next time they meet the new challenge, they'll be better prepared and equipped. So the more practice that they have, the better that they will be at, at experiencing those transitions. What we want is we want to support the child to become autonomous and to become resilient. And every transition offers the opportunity to meet the challenge better next time, creating autonomy. So now that we understand a little bit more about why children have difficulty with transitions or what transitions within the kindergarten they might have difficulty with, 
these are some strategies that you might like to implement in your program to support the transitions at kindergarten. First of all, reducing the number of transitions. This is a really simple way to support children is to reduce the number that you have, number of times children are transitioning throughout the day. Use a visual schedule. A visual and a verbal cue supports children who are distracted or children who have sensory processing difficulties and it helps them with their planning and their executive functioning and ultimately their independence. Provide warning of the transition. Make sure there is enough time. Sometimes children need a lot more time than you think is enough. So give them the time that they require. As time is abstract, you might choose your strategy depending on the need for flexibility. For example, a visual countdown may be better for a transition where you need to be flexible. And that's where you have five, four, three, two, one, and you can choose when you take off the five, take off the four, etc. If you need a bit more time in that transition and you may not be ready, by the time a countdown or a timer got to zero. You could write a social story or a social script, and these can help the children understand the steps in the instructions. And careful planning, being proactive, carefully planning your daily routine so you have more transitions from a non-preferred or an activity that they don't enjoy so much to preferred activities rather than moving away from the activities that they prefer to a non-preferred. And this is where careful planning comes into place and more of a flow of an indoor-outdoor program, reducing the number of transitions. Okay, so this is the transition that many of you are supporting children with at this time of the year, is the transition from kindergarten to school. Now, this can be a really highly complex time and an anxious time for families, particularly for those who have a child with additional needs or a disability. Ensuring you have a well considered transition plan that involves the families is very important. Family involvement is important, especially for children with additional needs, and it ensures that their knowledge and their experience about their child, any fears or worries that they have are shared with the school so the school has greater understanding about how to best support the child. Managing change is about managing anxiety and that's of the child, but also of the family. As early childhood educators, it's our responsibility to consider the negative long-term impacts that can exist if the transition is not well planned. Consider it from the perspective of the child and think about it as an approach of no surprises. Okay, what does the child need to know? This is what you need to consider. This is crucial for children with autism or with disabilities, additional needs, who need and want predictability. Who is the teacher? What does the school look like? Who will be in their class? What are the rules of the classroom? What are the rules of the playground? Where do they go if there's a problem and they need help? What does their classroom look like? Where are the toilets? What do they look like? What does the office look like? What does the library look like? What does the playground look like? Where in the playground are they allowed to go? What does the library look like? Are there any other rooms? Art, music, where do they put their bag? What is the routine? Where do they eat their lunch? Where do they have a drink? Can they work the drink fountain? Where do they go to calm down? What do they do? Can they open their bag? Can they open their lunch? Can they take off their jumper? Can they open their drink? What are the sensory considerations of the school? Lights, noises, smells, the sensory input of their clothing. This will all be new for the child and could potentially trigger challenging behaviours. Do they have friends? Who can they play with? What does the school bell mean? There may be a number of bells throughout the day. What do these bells mean? And it's important that the children know and understand this. Now, there are a lot of questions to think about, but if you're thinking of an approach of no surprises, you need to consider as much as possible. Now, for the children who have a disability or additional needs, a program support group is something that you as educators should be setting up. This is a group with the family or the family's advocate the early childhood teacher, the school teacher, and any other staff or therapist that support the child. 
The purpose of these meetings is to discuss the learning outcomes and transition strategies for the child and to develop a plan to support a successful move to school. Now, we've considered a number of reasons why children have difficulty with transitions, and we've talked about a number of strategies that can support children with transitions from home to kindergarten, during the day at kindergarten, and from kindergarten to school. Now, once you've decided on your transition strategies, you'll need to continually assess these. As you may, as they may change the strategies you use, or you may need to use multiple. What we want is the aim to increase the child's independence ultimately and reduce their anxiety. We can use these transition strategies before the transition occurs, during the transition, and after the transition. For children, especially those with an autism spectrum disorder or a disability, they want and they need predictability. Our aim is to increase the predictability. Their transition for the child doesn't finish on day one of school, starting or on the commencement of kindergarten, and it takes time for children to adapt to their new routine. All of the work that has been done ensures that their transition continues in a smooth manner. Always keep the child at the centre. Now, where to from here? You've got your online chat questions, your email questions that we'll respond to. We'll follow up today with some links and some resources that you can use to support the transitions. And if you haven't already applied for KISS Consultancy and you are applying for KISS funding for children, you can tick the box for KISS Consultancy. We can support you with the transitioning of children to school, but also we help you with the transitioning of children into kindergarten next year and any other support needs that you have. If you haven't applied for the KISS Consultancy, you can reach out to your local support coordinator who can then uh, put in the application for you. It's as simple as that. The resources and the support for how you apply for KISS Consultancy are also on the Department of Education website. Thank you for your time.